Well, welcome to this tutorial, which is going to look at render passes and compositing in Houdini. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a scene. And we're then going to set up uh, some render passes, and we're going to show how to use them both to change the shading of the model that we're using, but also to composite the whole model over a background plate. But first of all, let's set up the scene. I've got some geometry here in a file which I'm loading in. And by the way, all of the models and the pictures which I'm using in this tutorial are not my own. They are downloaded from the internet and released under a Creative Commons attribution license. And at the end of the video, I will list uh, the attributions of those models. So I've taken this file which uh, has some groups defined on it. And then I've separated out, split the, the object into three parts. A top part, let's just uh, see that, a top part, a frame, and some wheels. And I've done that because that makes the shading assignment slightly easier. And I've parented all of them to a null, which means that we can move all of them together and I've disabled the display on the original model. So the first thing I want to do is to set up some materials. And I think for the top of the lounger I'm going to use a clay-like material. So I'm going to call this perhaps lounger top. And I'm going to use a texture which I prepared earlier for this. And I'm also going to lay down a reflective material, which is I think what I'm going to use for my frame. There we are. And I'm going to give it a slightly different base color, maybe a dark orangey color like that. And then finally, I'm going to put two different, or I'm going to put a different material onto the wheel. So I'm going to lay down another clay material. And I'm going to give it a much darker base color, like so. And we'll call this tire. So let's assign these materials. I can just click and drag this onto the top, which should assign it. There we are. I can click and drag the reflective material onto a bit of the frame, like so. And that assigns that. For the wheels, I'm going to do need to do something a little bit more complicated. And there are two reasons I'm, I'm doing this. One is uh, because I want to have, in order to demonstrate at a later stage how to apply a shadow pass. I want to have materials that are assigned both here at the at the scene level, but also I want some per primitive material assignment. So we can assign materials here at the geometry level using the material SOP. And the material SOP allows me to take a, a group for in this in this case I've defined a group for the inside of the wheels the outside of the wheels and I can give it a material and in this case I'm going to give it the reflective material and then I'm going to add another override and for this one I'm going to take the outer group just the outer group and I'm going to give that the tire material like so so this material node is now got two sub assignments and in fact I've managed to delete the first of those, so let's do that again. So that should now be right. One of them is assigned the tire material, the other one the reflective material. So that's assigned our materials. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to create a camera, control click. I'm going to create a render node and we can just use default lighting. Let's render that. 
and we should see that we get let me select a region of it like so we can see we're getting a reasonably good representation of our chair well the next thing is to bring in a background view and I'm going to do this by hitting the D option with my cursor over the 3D viewport and this brings up a dialog which allows me to choose a file to set as my background image and I've got another file that's uh, been downloaded from the internet and we can see it's a beach scene and there are two ways in which uh, Houdini can add a background image to your scene. In this case this is linked to the view so if I move my view around the background image stays static at the back. I'll just demonstrate the other way of setting it up uh, which is to tick off automatically place image and in this case the image is centered at the origin you can scale it like so and then it will stay in that fixed position and won't move around with the camera. Now obviously if you're going to composite the result you'll want this image to stick to the camera because in the compositor the image is going to fill the camera view. So I'm going to change this back to automatically place image and let's have a look through our camera. Now we can see we've got a problem here because our background image is not quite filling the camera's viewport so we're going to need to adjust the camera's viewport so it's exactly the same size as the background image. Let me bring in that background image and we can see what size it is. It's 1084 by 721 pixels. So let me go to my camera settings here and I want to override the resolution so it's 1081 by 721 I think that was right. Let me just check that. That's right. So this should mean, and indeed we can see here, that our camera's viewport is now exactly the same as the dimensions of that image. And that's going to be important when we get on to compositing later on. Just a couple of other remarks on the matching of the camera to the background image here. Of course, uh, if we were having a moving camera, uh, against a moving set of background images we would have to, have to use some match moving software to identify things like the focal length and exact position of the camera and strictly speaking even with a still image we need to match the focal length of the camera to the focal length of the camera that actually took the background uh, in this case I think that's probably not going to be necessary we're going to be able to set this up without uh, doing that so let's start by trying to position our deck chair or our, our lounger in a way which is a bit more realistic uh, against this background. So I'm going to move uh, the lounger, let's just select it, uh, or rather select the position and let's move it down and rotate it And I've indicated a problem here because what I did then was accidentally select just the top of the lounger. And now I've moved the top. I've given it a translation that's different from the rest. So let's zero that back out. And I can avoid this problem happening by turning off the selectable on these. So now if I select here, I can't actually select any of these. 
you can see that objects are not being selected. I can only select the position. So let's now, I'm going to turn off the construction plan. Let's now continue positioning our lounger. And we can see that that's looking more or less okay for a lounger. Well, the next thing I want to do is create some lighting in my scene. And I want as far as possible to match the lighting to the lighting in the background plate. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got any very clear clues as to where the light is coming from in this background plate. We've got some very long shadows here and here. Uh, but they're long because they're reflecting extended pieces of root. And my guess is that the sun is actually pointing down at rather a steep angle here, so it's quite uh, near midday. And that's why we're getting these long shadows underneath here, but we're not getting very elongated shadows here. We can see this shadow goes down like that. So I need to try and match the lighting to that. Let me bring up a distant light, and I'm going to put it at the origin. That's going to be our sun. So I'm going to make it come down at a pretty steep angle like that and see whether that produces what we want. Now, obviously, the deck chair at the moment has nothing to cast shadows onto, so I'm going to need to create a grid. And I'm just to put that at the default location. Now, that's not going to be appropriate for our deck chair, but if I bring it over here and parent it to the lounger, you can see that it moves underneath the deck chair. And I'm going to enlarge that a little bit. Not quite that much, maybe like that. And that'll give us a, a bit of space to uh, see the shadows. Now, if I go into my render view and render this, we can see that we're not getting any shadows. Uh, that, of course, is because I've failed to enable shadows on my light. I'm going to set it to ray trace shadows at the moment because they're easier, faster to calculate. So let's re-render that. And what we should see is that we're getting some shadows. I'm going to zoom in on this part of the image here. And there we can see we're getting shadows. OK, but uh, this is a bit difficult to compare with our background image because our background image isn't displayed in the render, and that's quite right. Uh, the render ignores any background image. Uh, we add the background image in compositing later. But we can, in fact, display the background image in this view as well. If we hit D to bring up the display options, we can see that there's a background tab, and we can select a file. Uh, and I can select the same background that we had earlier. And we can see that that's probably looking OK for our sunlight. I think I might move the light slightly round to this direction, very slightly. And let's re-render. I think that's probably looking OK. So that's set up some lighting in our scene. I now want to address the issue of the reflections, which at the moment are going to be reflecting something that doesn't look a bit like this background. And also perhaps look at some uh, global illumination for the scene. But before we do that, if we have a look at this whole image now, we can see that the deck chair doesn't seem to be quite angled correctly with respect to the background plane. I think we need to rotate this 
a little bit more in this direction, like so. And maybe around in that direction. Okay, so let's look now at this ref the reflections in our scene. And we've got a reflective shader here, uh, which is at the moment ray tracing uh, in the scene to gather reflections. Now, of course, there's nothing much in the scene at the moment. There's this white grid uh, that we've just got in there to look at the shadows. But the rest of the scene, as far as the ray tracer is concerned, is empty. The ray tracer is not going to pick up this background. But what we can do is give the reflective shader an environment map to work on. Now, I'm going to be lazy here, and I'm just going to select the same image that we've been using as the background. And if I do that, we may see uh, that the reflections look reasonably good, even though, of course, that isn't physically accurate. So let's go back to our render view, have a look. And we can, we should see, and let's zoom in, and that still seems to be reflecting this object here. And that's because, of course, the environment map that we've given the reflective shader only comes into play if a ray doesn't hit anything else first. So for the moment, I'm just going to turn off that grid. And we should now find... Yeah, that's looking slightly better. We're getting a reflection of something there that looks a little bit better. I suspect that's the sand. So let's also perhaps turn down the reflectivity, like so. And that should be a bit more like it. And I'm going to give it a reflection tint uh, that's similar to the color of the paint. And that makes it slightly more interesting, but gives you a slight degree of reflection.